One of the uh, one of the thorns in Tesco's side, of course, has been the discount retailers. Um, how much of a uh, of a of a market share do you think the discounters can take out of the rest of the market? It's very difficult to assess. It's a highly competitive market. It depends what all of the players do in the coming years. Um, the recession, that, the long recession that we've seen in the last five years, I suppose has favoured the discounters to some extent. Uh, as we move into recovery, perhaps it gives an opportunity for the middle market players to get considered again by customers, but it depends what they do, whether they innovate and Im improve their offers. So it'll continue to stay competitive. It's hard to predict who will be the winners over the years ahead. Uh, we've seen some price cutting, of course, from the more established players, the bigger supermarkets. Uh, so, Terry, is that something that actually is going to make life more difficult for the discounters? Well, I, I think that... Uh, it's understandable that uh, all parts, all players in the market will be battling to try to stay relevant to customers today. Uh, it's never changed in the industry in that way and the consumers, uh, you know, have been the winners. I mean, I mean, I think the retail sector in the UK is a standout sector because it is so competitive. It means that all firms have to be on their metal uh, and it means that those firms are dedicated to improving the lot of ordinary consumers and in a way it's a very good benchmark for the rest of the UK economy which is what we're talking about uh, today at the IFB that uh, the more competitiveness you see through the economy the better British firms uh, will be and the better able uh, to export their products and services around the world. Uh, yeah, talking about uh, Tesco and, uh, and where it is right now, you as a shareholder, you know, not, not a bondholder perhaps, but we, we were having a conversation about the bonds of Tesco earlier on. I mean, could you have envisaged, uh, being a shareholder in the business for so long, could you have envisaged that this was going to be a, a, a sub-investment grade bond in, in, back in your day, uh, Sir Terry? No, I don't think anyone uh, could have envisaged that. Um, it, Tesco has always had a very strong... Uh, credit rating, not least because of its strong property backing. But look, there's a new management team in place there now, a new board. They've got to address the issues that they have. Uh, it is a very strong business uh, with a very strong consumer base and dedicated staff. And uh, provided they continue to focus on the customers, which I believe they are doing now, improve their offer, uh, then it will have a very good future, I'm sure. As, as the AGM approaches, of course, they are you know, focusing, as you say, on the customer selling assets, changing the relationship with suppliers. Is that the right recipe? Well, I, I think that uh, all businesses must just focus on their customers and listen very carefully to what they say about the business, about how they live their lives, and put themselves in a position to respond in a useful way with improved products and services. And if you do that, you've got a, a good business. And... Uh, Tesco has demonstrated that, uh, that it can do that over the years, and I'm sure it will again in the future. But look, this morning I'm here not to talk about Tesco. I'm here to talk about the IFB uh, and uh, what it is able to do for the overall economy of Britain. Yeah, so it's one year until we see the International Festival for Business returning to Britain. What can it achieve, that kind of showcase of, uh, of British business, do you think? Well, I think it's very important. The IFB began in 2014 for the first time. It was a huge success. Uh, amazingly, uh, 3,000 firms reported doing more business as a result of being at the IFB in 2014. A thousand more firms reported uh, that they exported more. Uh, more than 50% of the firms thought that it was an important showcase for improving their uh, reputation uh, in the industry sectors. So a big success on which 2016 can build. Um, and it's a very important time. It's a very competitive world out there that British companies confidently go out and engage with the rest of the world, see who's the best in their sector, learn from them and take them on. And uh, I'm sure they can do very, very well. We've got a very broad-based economy. We're good in lots of sectors. Uh, and we, if we match that with ambition to grow and compete with the very best, we can have a lot of success. 
International investors, though, said Terry, may have read headlines about low productivity in the UK. Is that something that keeps you up at night in terms of the UK's ability to sell its investment case? No, I don't think so. I think in part uh, it's because the slow recovery was, was, was jobs-led, which, by the way, is a very good thing, uh, ahead of investment. Uh, that's changing now uh, as wages rise and investment is growing. Um, it's also a bit of a mixed picture. You've got some sectors like car manufacturing with very, very good uh, productivity records, whereas other sectors like the financial services, normally with good productivity, have been affected by the recession. So uh, it's dropped uh, a bit. But, you know, the, the biggest break on productivity is product and market regulation. Uh, regulation is too high, it grows too fast, uh, and if we can just trust customers more, trust markets more, you'll get more productivity um, in the UK economy. If we have more competitive markets, you'll get more productivity in the UK economy. Is that UK regulation, is that homegrown regulation, Sir Terry, or is that European regulation? Well, you get it from both sources. I would actually say uh, it's more from the UK. Uh, I know there's a lot of focus on EU regulation, which is itself a challenge, but uh, there's also plenty of homegrown uh, regulation too.